Well, hi everybody. I'm standing here waiting for my groceries to be delivered. I'm trying to work out whether I'm being incredibly lazy or incredibly smart. <laughs> I've never done it before where I've ordered my food online and asked somebody to deliver it to my door. So let's see how that goes. Oh, there's the van. Well, there's the van. Apparently the guy's name's Mark. Exciting. Well, here is the difference. If I'd gone to the store, I would have spent probably a minimum of a hundred, maybe a hundred and twenty. This does not include a delivery fee of about six bucks because I'm a first time user. So quite honestly, <laughs> I've not only saved gas and time, but I've probably saved close to a hundred bucks. Hmm. Now the downside of it was that I ordered a lemon meringue pie for tomorrow from Thanksgiving as well as a pumpkin pie. They'd run out, so they didn't deliver it, and they didn't deliver anything else instead. So I may still have to go out and get that, but we'll see. Well, hello everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal on a changeable Sunday morning. Very unusual for me to be recording a vlog in the car on a Sunday morning, but I am about to do my civic duty. As you know, here in Canada, we do things on a slightly different time scale than people in the States, so it's officially Thanksgiving weekend for us, So, and I'm sure you all wish me a happy Thanksgiving, as I do all my Canadian viewers. Um, but the other thing is, that we're coming up to elections and I'm on my way to go vote and oops I'm <laughs> you know habits are terrible thing I normally turn left if I come this way <laughs> I'm not going there <laughs> so I'm off to go and vote and the the part of me that doesn't like change apparently is a little bit upset because we used to vote just literally at the bottom of my street I mean like I could walk to it and for some reason they have seen fit to change the place where I have to vote and now I've got to get in my car and drive for 15 minutes to vote now you can imagine that got up my nose just a little bit but I can cope with change I don't have to like it, I just can cope with it, right? There's a difference. So that's where I'm off to right now. And I'm hoping that I don't have to stand outside because it's rain. I think it's going to rain. <laughs> and, I, and obviously I am not dressed for rain. I'm dressed for midwinter nearly. It's a really strange sort of feeling about the day today. It can't quite make up its mind. It's 14 degrees, 57 American. Um, so it's sort of like, yeah, right. It's not cold, cold, but it's not warm either. 14 degrees sounds quite warm, but it isn't. It's, you know, not warm. Don't need a coat, but got a wool cardigan on instead. One of my nice ones. 
Alright, so I will let you know how the voting goes, and this will be the second time in my life that I get to vote. Actually, I should explain that to people who might be new to my voting experience. Um, all my life I lived, I, I left England just after I qualified to vote, and so I never did. Uh, yeah, I left when I was 21, and, and I had been eligible to vote at 18, but 19, 20, 21, and when I was 22, I, I would have voted, got it? But I had, I left England in, when I was 21, so I never got to vote. Then I lived in Africa for 17 years, and of course when I lived there, I was not a citizen, I was a, what they call a landed immigrant. And so it gave me rights for everything except voting and stuff like that. And then I came to Canada and for some reason stayed a landed immigrant for over 20 years. Never ever became a citizen until one day I went to renew my landed immigrant documents. And the woman behind the counter said to me, may I ask you a personal question? And I said, sure, go right ahead. She goes, is there a reason why you have never applied to become a Canadian because you've been here over 20 years. I think you qualify. And by the way, at your age, you don't have to take the test. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I realized as she said that word, that part of the reason I had never applied to become a Canadian was because you had to take some stupid test. And I'm quite human, like a lot of you. <laughs> and there's this subconscious thing, what if I fail? <laughs> that was my thing, what if I fail? So every time, yeah, I just let it go and I carried on and then the next time I would go through the same process and never did apply to become a Canadian. And then she said the magic words, you don't have to take the test. I said, really? Give me the documents. What do I need? <laughs> and then I have, I know it sounds strange for some of you, but I have an abhorrent fear of filling in legal documents, government documents. And I think it has something to do with the fact that I lived in a police state for many, many years. Um, where if you did things wrong, they could throw you in jail and throw the key away for, for a long time. So, oh, I'm sure this is going to upset a lot of people. Anyway, the, the short story. I uh, am pleased to tell you that a few years ago, I applied. And better than that, a few years ago, I got accepted as a Canadian. And it must have been these people. Sorry, I got people going at, at ant pace. Anyway, so the good news is I became a Canadian and got to vote. So this is my second time of actually voting. It's very exciting for me. I'll be back in a minute. Well, that was interesting, and one of the nice things about doing something like that is 
you get to stand in a lineup. <laughs> um, but I found that the trick is look for a friendly person. And that's what I did. And <laughs> I slipped in behind a friendly person and she and I were chatting away and it made the time go quickly. And she was about as shy and retiring as I am. And uh, so that made it a fun experience. It's amazing what you can learn about somebody just by standing in a lineup with them for 15 minutes. So that's all done. Hey, good. Now the reason that we were talking about it and the reason I wanted to talk about it is because one of the things that I challenge you to do, uh, for those of you who are in the States uh, and still got your election going, and any of the Canadians who haven't voted yet, um, if you know any person that is eligible to vote, um, make sure that they do. I think people think that it doesn't make a difference. and. I want to tell you something. If you can't be bothered to get off your rear end and go vote, you don't have the right to complain, in my view. And that's my view, and I'm sticking to it. Um, the same thing as I encourage all the young people I know to go vote. And they also say, oh, what's the point, Sal? You know, it doesn't make a difference. And I go, oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, I'm in a, a particular riding here um, that is apparently very close at the moment. Uh, everybody thought it was a shoe in for a certain candidate and another candidate stepped up uh, uh, on and made themselves available and now suddenly this is a very hotly contested seat so does my does my vote count this time absolutely you know it could be the difference of one or two votes and my vote could be one of those one or two votes and so that's what I try and explain to, to young people when I talk to them about it, which is you never know how closely contested your riding is. And how would you feel if somebody won by one vote and you didn't, and you didn't vote? How would you feel then? So, you know, to me, it's very, very important. And I, you get a chance to meet new people. Now, there's one thing that I was really quite sorry about, and that was that I actually didn't get this lady's name because she was delightful. I know what her name was, but I don't know what her last name was. But anyway, and she told me some local news that I didn't know about, so it was a very good all-around experience. And I managed to get in there and... I'm going to get home all within the hour. So that's pretty good time management as well. That was my one fear, you know, would I be held up there for too long? But no, it, apparently I'm going to be able to get there and back again all within the hour. However, she was also uh, upset about the fact that they'd moved the polling stations. So what they've obviously done is they have lessened the number of polling stations, I think would be fair. because she was telling me where she used to vote and that was a totally different place from where I used to vote. So if they've cancelled those voting stations and my voting station as well, you know, that's two voting stations that are no longer functioning. Mm. My concern was the place where I just had to go vote was not what I call highly accessible by transit. So what if I didn't have a car? I suppose then you do a mail-in vote. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. That's the only way you could do it. Okay. <laughs> Lots of thinking around that one. we got clouds coming in all over the place. So, thought for the day is vote obviously have an opinion you don't it doesn't have to be right you know I, I always say that to people which is 
you know, if I ask you a question, how many people, have you noticed how many people, if you ask them a straight question, you know, do you like A or B? They say, well, I don't know. And I keep saying to them, it's not a pass and fail question. You know, you're not going to die if you get it wrong. Just, what do you think? Well, I don't know. Well, you know, why not? So I, especially when I'm talking to people in my day-to-day -day business and, and my, you know, my friends, I'm going, please have an opinion. Yeah, we can agree to disagree. That doesn't mean I won't like you. You know, the fact that you're going to vote for one party and I'm going to vote for another doesn't mean I'm never going to speak to you again. It's just like, okay, that's true, right? That's why we have the system. And to me, To me, the next question is, do you vote for the person or do you vote for the party? And that's a difficult one for some people, you know, because I really like the person who is in my writing, but I don't like the party overall. Or the opposite, which is... I really don't like the person that's running in my writing, but I really want to vote for the party. So that does make it difficult for some people. And the good news is, it's your choice. Absolutely your choice. Where you put your vote. Do you put your vote to support the person? Or do you put your vote to support the party? Now we had an interesting thing happen in my writing, which is, I think I might have mentioned it before, which is one of the candidates <laughs> made a statement that the uh, leader of the party didn't like, and they got booted just before the elections, just before we all went out to vote. They, uh, they booted the candidate. You're going, whoa, now hang on a second. And so for the longest time we didn't have a candidate, and now we did. So that was exciting. All right, everybody. Hope you have a super day. Remember to have an opinion. It makes a difference.